Greetings. About six years ago, during summer vacation from teaching school, I bought a small lathe and a mill, and I decided that maybe the best way to learn how to operate these devices would be to work on some projects. So I built two steam engines and a small air compressor. And I just noticed these the other day, sitting on the shelf gathering dust, so I thought it might be fun to take them out into the workshop and see if we can get them to work. So let's do that. Also, just to give you an idea of how these things started out, uh, they were just chunks of scrap aluminum that I got from uh, some metal companies here in town. They don't give it away anymore. Aluminum's gotten to be fairly expensive. Uh, sheet aluminum, uh, not so bad. The great big cylinders, uh, or rods I guess you'd call it, uh, get pretty expensive. But this is what you need when you're going to cut off your flywheel your cylinders and things of that sort. Okay, as you can see, they had some pretty, these little engines had some pretty humble beginnings. Here's the first device I built. It's the simplest of the three, uh, so it was the logical place to start. It's an air compressor. There is an aluminum cylinder here with an aluminum piston inside that runs up and down. There's the connecting rod between the split crank halves. And as you turn the handle, the piston will rise up and down in the cylinder. Now, to make the air only go one way, I made a little valve here. And all this is is a chamber with a BB, or actually a little ball bearing down at the bottom. When the piston rises, it pushes the ball bearing down and closes the exit, so the air has no choice but to come out here. When the piston falls, it will draw the BB up to allow the air to come in here and be then be compressed when the piston comes back up and push out. So this little valve over here is what keeps the air moving in one direction. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you, it's hard to see because the air is invisible, uh, I'm going to hook it up uh, to a little hose and put the end of the hose in water and as I turn the crank you'll see that uh, it does actually compress quite a bit of air. Okay, so there it is. I was very proud of the machine work I did up on the head and on the crank. Bearings with the little bearing caps, split bearing caps like in a, a V8 or engine, car engine. A lot heavier duty metal than it needed, but I couldn't resist. This is just made from scrap in the garage. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, here we are with the air compressor. Uh, so that you can see that it's actually putting out air, I have run a little hose from it down into a, a small glass of water. And now I'm going to turn the crank and watch it uh, as it blows compressed air through the water. Pretty impressive, eh? Alrighty, well that was a simple demonstration. Now it's time for a steam engine. Okay, here's the second device I built. It's a single cylinder steam engine. We've got the large heavy duty, heavy flywheel over here with the counterbalanced throw. Uh, two control arms. The upper control arm con uh, comes over here and moves the valve mechanism back and forth. Now uh, what that's going to do is when the steam or air, we're going to use compressed air to operate it, comes in this way, it will either direct the air or steam to this side of the piston to push it this way, and then once it's headed back this way, the valve will change and direct the steam this way to push it this way. So every time the piston thinks it's finally accomplished uh, its trip or finished its its trip through the cylinder we pull a fast one change the valving and put the pressure on the other side of the piston so we're pushing it one way then pushing it back pushing it one way pushing it back unlike car engines where you only push down on the pistons this one is actually a double action uh, type of steam engine uh, let me just give you a little look at the intricacies of it I thought that was cute the contrasting metal the brass counterweight. Good size flywheel and made the 
valving what they call, I believe, the valve chest up here out of brass also. I want it to look nice um, and also to make it work and we'll see in just a minute if it does but uh, that's kind of a round trip all the way around it lets you know what it looks like and now let's see if it actually does work. Okay, here we are with a single uh, cylinder steam engine. Uh, this isn't going to be real fancy. I've taken a little piece of uh, neoprene hose, put it over the steam input spout, and then I'm going to take a just plain old compressed air uh, chuck and put it up against the inlet and push the button and see what happens. Well, works pretty well actually. Better than I expected. Okay, now let's try the two-cylinder steam engine. Okay, this is the third and final uh, steam engine that I built. And this one's pretty elaborate. Um, it's actually a two-cylinder steam engine. The two cylinders are down below and the valving system is in the upper part. Uh, this is actually uh, two uh, rectangular blocks of aluminum that are uh, put together. Um, as you can see, the valving system's up here operated by these uh, push rods. And as the flywheel goes around, you'll see that the push rods are activated and they either uh, they direct actually the where the uh, air, compressed air, or the steam is going to go on which side of the piston. Sort of like just two of the previous steam engine together, a little smaller. Um, to do this now with it with the push rods, I had to make uh, machine some cams. I made bronze cams. Uh, that was no fun. Uh, I don't have a cam grinding device. It just had to be done by hand. But you can see the lobes of the cam protrude there. And as that lobe comes around, it's going to push the push rod forward and activate the valving system. Okay, so this thing hopefully is going to spin around real fast. It'll just be a blur if everything goes right. But that's only because all the internal parts are working correctly. Uh, timing is an issue too. You have to be sure that the air or, or steam is exactly timed properly uh, with the piston to cor uh, correspond to the piston motion. And uh, really pretty tricky. Each of these pieces here has a adjusting a little uh, set screw so that I can move the the arms and move the cams and get everything into synchrony uh, which we'll see here real soon if it is. Okay, quite a uh, elaborate little device. Um, it, one last thing too, if you wonder where I got the idea for these, actually I don't know. I've, I really had no plans and I've never seen an engine like this. I know these engines are on YouTube and other people make them, but in this particular case I just walked out and started machining metal and fitting it together and trying, uh, tried to make sure that everything lined up right and worked right and it, it actually turned out pretty well. I guess I saved a whole lot of time by not drawing any plans. All right, these are the air vents, the exhaust. Um, all in all, kind of a cute little piece, uh, conversation piece. Uh, let's see if it actually works. Okay, here we are with the two-cylinder steam engine. Uh, we'll do the same procedure. We'll put the little piece of hose over the end to seal the air chuck and plug the air chuck against it and let's see what happens. Wow, works pretty well. Uh, you can tell it's not in perfect balance. The knocking sound you heard is just exactly the same sound you'd hear in a car when a rod starts to knock. Uh, I don't have ball bearings or really bearing inserts or anything in here. It's just simply steel uh, axles going through uh, holes in aluminum. So it slaps around a little bit, but it sure does work. Okay, the... I can't get over it. i got to do it one more time. Well, I shouldn't have. Okay. 
well, well, sadly, we had a casualty after the two-cylinder steam engine ran and then suddenly ceased running. Uh, for good reason, both the pistons broke loose from their connecting rods, so I had to pull the back out of the engine. These are the springs that return the valves forward, uh, keeping pressure on the cams. But uh, both of the pistons broke loose, so I'm going to have to come up with uh, some sort of a stronger uh, connecting rod and reassemble this beast and we'll do it again. Okay, so it's down for now, but it's not out.